Chapter 8, Learning Objective 2. Explain, calculate, and record depreciation using the units of production, straight line, and double declining balance methods. Depreciation is the process of allocating the cost of a PPE asset, except for land which has an unlimited life, over the periods expected to benefit from its use. Depreciation begins when an asset is ready for use. Now the method used must be consistent with the matching principle. For example, the useful life of a car might be four years or depreciated at a rate of 25% per year. There are two common categories of depreciation methods and they're either usage-based, which includes units of production, or time-based, which includes the methods of straight-line depreciation or double-declining balance. The calculation of depreciation involves three important factors. One, the asset's cost. Two, the residual value, which is the estimated value at the end of its useful life. And three, the estimated useful life or productive output, which is the estimated duration of the benefit to the current owner in years or other various measures of outputs. Note that the useful life of an asset is not the same as an asset's economic life. The units of production method is used when the output varies over the periods of time benefited. This method assumes that the benefits and revenue generation accrue in proportion to the asset's output, such as in units, hours used, or even kilometers driven if we're talking about vehicles. Depreciation expense then will vary from year to year under this method. The formula for units of production depreciation starts with determining the depreciation rate per unit calculated as the original cost minus any residual value, and then divided by the estimated units of output, which again could be kilometers driven, units produced, hours operated, etc. Then that depreciation rate per unit is multiplied by the number of units produced, or kilometers driven, or hours operated, to come up with the total depreciation expense for the period. For example, say an asset is purchased on January 1st, 2022 at a price of $20,000. The asset has a residual value of $2,000 and is estimated to produce 10,000 units over the period owned by the company. Let's also assume that the actual output for 2022 is 1,500 units. We would calculate the depreciation expense for 2022 as the $20,000 cost less the $2,000 residual value to end up with what we call a depreciable cost of 18,000 and then divide by 10,000 estimated units produced to end up with a depreciation rate of $1.80 per unit, and that we multiply that by the actual 1,500 units produced to end up with a depreciation expense of $2,700. The journal entry to record the depreciation then includes a debit to increase depreciation expense of $2,700 and a credit to the contra asset accumulated depreciation of $2,700. At this point, the carrying amount or net book value is $17,300, calculated as the original $20,000 cost less the $2,700 in accumulated depreciation up to December 31st. Now, if we continue the depreciation expenses through to 2026, applying the $1.80 rate per unit to the actual units over the five years, we can see the annual depreciation expenses in the carrying value at the end of each year. You should pause the video to ensure that you can calculate the depreciation expense each year as well as the carrying amounts based on the depreciation expenses. Based on the actual usage in the third column here, we end up with a carrying value at the end of five years equal to the residual value of $2,000. But that might not always be the case, especially if the estimated usage differs from the actual usage. In reality, the number of units produced over the life of an asset might be greater or less than the 10,000 units originally estimated. If that were the case, we would adjust the depreciation expense in the last year to ensure that we end up with a carrying value equal to the $2,000 residual value. We can illustrate that here with this variation in the example. If actual output was 11,800 units based on 2026 actual usage of 4,800 units, we would calculate the depreciation in 2026 based on the formula. The expense would be $8,640, but the depreciation in the last year cannot exceed $5,400, otherwise we would end up with a carrying value that is below the residual value. 
so we must override the expense in the last year to ensure that we end up with a carrying value that equals the residual value of $2,000. The next method, and perhaps the most commonly used method of depreciation, is the straight line method, which is the first of the two time-based approaches. And it assumes that the benefits and revenue generation accrue equally each time period and results in a depreciation expense that's the same each year. The formula is quite similar to units of production depreciation, where the numerator is equal to the cost less estimated residual value, but now we divide by the estimated useful life in years, which gives us the annual depreciation expense. If we apply this to our $20,000 asset acquisition, our calculation is based on the $20,000 cost less $2,000 residual value, and then we divide by the five year estimated life to end up with $3,600 in annual depreciation expense. The carrying value under the straight line method after the first year would be $16,400 calculated as the $20,000 cost less the $3,600 accumulated depreciation. If we follow the calculations through the entire five year useful life, you can see that the depreciation expense is the same every year at $3,600 resulting in a carrying value at the end of 2026 of $2,000, which nicely equals the residual value. The second time-based approach is the accelerated depreciation method, also known as declining balance depreciation, which assumes that assets will contribute more to revenue generation in the earlier stages of its useful life, such as for computers or other assets with high obsolescence. Under this method, depreciation expense decreases each year and the most common form is double declining balance, or DDB, which calculates the depreciation as the carrying value multiplied by the depreciation rate times two, divided by the estimated useful life, N. If we apply this to our example, we can determine that the 2022 depreciation would be the $20,000 cost times two over five to get $8,000. Alternatively, we can often calculate the double declining balance rate as one divided by the useful life and then double it. So if the useful life is five years, the straight line rate is one fifth or one over five or 20%. And then we double it to get 40%, which is what we apply to the cost of $20,000 to get $8,000. And the carrying value would then be $12,000, our $20,000 cost less $8,000 in accumulated depreciation. Note here that the residual value is not included in the depreciation calculation, but will factor into the carrying amount in the final year's depreciation expense. If we calculate the depreciation for all the years up to 2026, applying the 40% double declining rate to the carrying value each year, we see that for 2023, the depreciation expense is $4,800 based on 40% of the 2022 carrying value of $12,000, and that results in a carrying value at the end of 2023 of $7,200. We'd repeat that process until the last year, 2026, where if we were to apply the DDB rate of 40% to the 2025 carrying value, we would end up with depreciation expense of $1,036.80, but that would result in a carrying value that's below the $2,000 residual. So we must force the 2026 depreciation expense to be the amount that's necessary to end up with the residual value and apply depreciation expense of $592 instead of the calculated rate. Here's a graph comparing the annual depreciation expense of all three methods. Notice that the straight line depreciation method is just that, a straight line because the depreciation expense is the same every year. The units of production method varies each year based on the number of units produced, which is not consistent, and therefore depreciation can be high in some years and low in others. Finally, the double declining balance rate starts with the highest depreciation expense and then falls on a downward sloping basis, getting smaller and smaller, and will end up with the lowest expense in the last year compared to the other two methods.